Welcome to Europe Let's Cooperate. We are back for a second day of Interreg Europe's Interregional Cooperation Forum. My name is Mia Itan and I'm a communication officer here at Interreg Europe and I will be your host for the second day of our event. Uh, I'm by no means alone here today. You're also going to meet many of my colleagues. We're going to take you through something very, very special because in uh, Europe Let's Cooperate is special every year. It's one of our highlights of the year, but this year there really is something new. It's about time to start talking about the future. Interreg Europe in 2021, 2027, that's our main topic for the entire day. And it's not going to be just us talking. There's also going to be a lot of discussions between you, our participants. Um, let's take a quick look at the agenda and get ready for the day. We are starting live here from our studio with a little welcome session. This is going to take about half an hour. We'll then take a very, very short break, stretch our legs a little bit, and then dive into the details of the future program. So between 10.30 and 12, we are going to go through everything you need to know about Interreg Europe in the 2021-2027 programming period. You'll hear about the key features, we'll talk about some of the novelties, we'll go through what remains, what is new, what changes, and how you can get ready. Um, we will also be taking your questions, so this session really is for you. We want to give you the info you need to get ready for the future. For that, we have already a poll running, so head over to Slido, give us some input, use the chat, send a little hello if you're already in, and uh, let's get going. Um, if you do have questions, now is a good time to start sharing them because we're going to be discussing them all day long as we advance through the program. Once we're done with the overview session of the future, we'll still keep covering some of your questions after noon for a little while, until 12.30 max. But then it is time to hand over to you and it'll be your turn to discuss. We have already a lot of project ideas. The chat has been going crazy over the past two days and already actually before the event a lot of people were sharing their ideas. You'll find some of those ideas in our expo. Um, the idea uh, owners have their pitch sessions and networking discussions throughout the afternoon. The first ones start at 12.30 and the discussions go on until 4. So make sure you have a look at the whole agenda of the event. You'll find that in the reception and note down the sessions that you are interested in. In the afternoon, we'll also be back for another little plenary session here from the studio. We'll take you through the tools and the assistance that we provide as a program to help you get ready for your next project. That's going to happen at 1.30. It'll be about half an hour. You'll also get a preview of our brand new website and see the new tools that we have in store for you for the future. So as you see, a lot of new things coming. Um, stick around and, uh, and share your questions. Let's make it an interactive and exciting day. And thanks a lot for joining. For those of you who might be new here, we're going to do a little bit of housekeeping to make sure that everyone is ready to go and uh, well settled for the event. For those of you who, who might have been already here yesterday, there might be a little bit of repetition, but you can help me out. Make use of the tools as we go through them and show the others how it works. First things first, we have a hashtag for this event, Europe Cooperates. You can use that not only here on Hopin and on the platform, but also on social media. We would love to see where you're joining us from. Maybe post a picture, um, share your comments. We have already been sharing a lot of information, some insights, uh, solutions, good practices, project results. And we will have a lot of highlights to share over the course of the day as well. So we would love to see what you take away from this event. So share your highlights also on social media and let's extend the conversation from the event platform to the, the broader social media landscape. Keep the hashtag in mind because we will also be using it for polls. There is a poll already open. We want to know what you want to hear today. So go to the Slido tab, give us some feedback and you can also go directly into Slido with that event hashtag and find our polls. Um, let's have a look at the tool that we're using for those of you who are new here. 
Um, we are indeed on Hopin, and this is our venue for the entire event, for this online event. You can navigate yourself with the menu on the left side of your screen. You'll find all the sections, all the different areas, and I do encourage you to visit all of them. You probably started from the reception today, and do go there during the breaks, because that's the place where you have the full agenda with all of these project idea discussions, every single session that we're organizing. You'll see when our points of contact are available for a chat in the expo. You'll see what is happening throughout the day and it also highlights the active session so keep an eye on that we are currently here on the main stage so this is where you come for our main highlights and main information we had some sessions yesterday those are now done but you can catch up on them in the replay section so the recordings from yesterday are already available these sessions are also being recorded and you can catch up on those uh, already by this afternoon through the very same replay tab and there's two other important areas for you to check out the expo is our area for information and project ideas. There is an Interreg Europe corner where you'll meet my colleagues and our representatives from the Joint Secretariat. There's also a point of contact corner and today uh, representatives from many countries in our program will be there so you can go and talk to many of them. You have a schedule of when they're available for a chat um, on that booth so make sure you go and check it out and there's some additional information. You'll find our results, you'll find uh, good practices, you'll find some other inspiration for you to make use of when you start thinking about your new projects as well as all these project ideas. There's more than 30 of them and as I said it's going to be the whole afternoon full of discussions so all you need to do is pick the ones that match your interests and reach out to those people who knows maybe start some new cooperation and that's it with the left side of your screen now if you head over to the right side that's where you control your profile fill it out make it easier for people to find you let them know what you're interested in and you also find chats polls twitter um, other interaction tools and a slido as i said i want you to make use of those we have an event chat that we are using throughout the event for general announcements. Right now we are in the session chat on this main stage. I want you to post a hello in that one as well because we have a team behind the scenes working on these chats and these tools and let's keep them busy. Uh, share comments, ideas and thoughts. But if you have questions, don't put those in the chat. Put those in the Q&A tab. I'm expecting quite a few of you to have some questions, some very specific ones or even some generic ones. Um, what do you want to know? Do you have a question? Put it in the Q&A because that makes it easier for us to keep track of those. My colleagues will answer those in the chat and will also take some up to discuss with our speakers as we advance through the program. And we also want to get some quick feedback from you through our polls. So head over to Slido, have a look at it, see how it's looking and uh, give us some input. Um, we have been running a word cloud already in Slido to see what you want to know. Um, how is it looking? Can we have a quick look at the word cloud on Slido and see how it's going? Yes, um, we want to know what you want to know about the new program and the word cloud is getting bigger. So it shows that there will be a lot to discuss today which is good. Keep adding your inputs, keep adding your questions. And I hope you're ready now. Uh, I hope the chat is looking good. Um, let's make it an active one. Let's keep discussing. I'm going to have a closer look at the chat in a little while, but to get the ball rolling with this session, we have an opening message from Anne Wetzel from our managing authority, Eau de France region. So Let's let her welcome you to this session and continue our discussion after that. A really warm welcome to you all around Europe for this Interact Europe event. It is so good that they are here to exchange together today. In these difficult times where the health crisis is still not over, we all experienced that borders can come back and that it's not so easy to exchange with each other. I think we all know that cooperation is more important than ever. Interreg Europe is about exchanging and find new solutions that you can um, transpose in one or other region of Europe. So we can, with 
cooperating together, find new solutions and invent a new way of living together all around this continent. There's also the possibility that peer-to-peer -peer learning or the platforms help you to find the solutions, the best practice in other parts of Europe and learn from what others just did or invented some time ago. It's all about what will we do together and how we do it better. I hope that you start today in exchanging, in thinking about new projects, in finding uh, partners all around Europe and that for next year, which will be a really important year for the Interreg Europe, because we start and launch uh, the first call, that you will be ready to start the European adventure. I wish you a really great day, great exchanges, a lot of uh, fruitful thoughts for the future and for European cooperation. Thank you so much. So there you go. We hope you find this day inspiring and we hope you make good use of it because as you heard, we are heading towards the first call for project proposals and the time to prepare for that starts now. If you haven't started yet, you're in the right place. We're going to help you get started. As I was saying, I am not here alone and we have a whole team helping you out to do that. I want to start the discussion with a very key figure from our program, Irvin Sivers, and we are going to help you get going and understand how Interreg Europe and we can help you. Uh, good morning, Irvin. Welcome. Um, we have so far about 700 people following us and more people are joining and coming in. Um, how can we introduce Interreg Europe to them very, very briefly? What is the thing that makes Interreg Europe unique? Yeah, thank you, Mia. Also, well, welcome from my side to this second exciting day. Um, answering to Mia's question, um, there are a few main points which make Interreg Europe special. First of all, the geographical coverage. We are the only Interreg program which covers all EU plus Norway and Switzerland. Secondly, the objective of the program. We support policy improvements at the local and the regional level. For that, we have the main target group, the public authorities, and the means to achieve policy improvements is supporting exchange of experience, supporting learning. And then um, the third point which are special in this program is that we have two pillars of activities. We have on the one hand the projects and the other hand the policy learning platform. They have been presented yesterday with the excellent team of experts which you have probably seen, uh, the one or the other who have been there yesterday. So I think these are the main points uh, why we are special. Yes, and true, indeed, one of the many interact programs, but a very, very unique one. Um, let's stay on that for a little while. We've spent a good part of yesterday talking about results and achievements and, and where we are as a program now that we're coming to the end of the programming period and heading towards the next one. But um, can we dive a little bit deeper into it? How are we doing in terms of, of results and achievements? Where are we as a program at the moment and what kind of basis are we building on when it goes, comes to the future? Yeah. Uh, we will show you some uh, slides um, which uh, show that we have um, more than, you see, uh, almost 260 projects approved in four calls. So rather quickly the funds were uh, used up. We have uh, more than 2,000 partners from all over Europe, um, from the geographical areas in our projects. We have almost 90 percent of all regions involved in one or the other of uh, the projects. And then if it comes to uh, finances, uh, the results, we have um, almost 180 projects which are in the final stage, which report the final results. You see on the slides uh, almost 700 policy changes already reported, uh, more are to come. And then uh, you see a financial figure there, we have invested in this 100 76 projects, 225 million euro from the program, Interreg Europe funds. But these investment triggered investments on the local regional level, implementing the policy improvements, the knowledge they have 
of, uh, you saw the figure, uh, more than uh, 2 uh, billion euros. And if you uh, count it down, uh, what it means per euro invested of the program, we can say almost 6 euros um, added value. 1 euro invested in Interreg Europe triggers about 6 euros of investments on the local regional level financed by national funds, financed by regional and local funds. So I think this is an impressive uh, figure and we are proud of it. Impressive figures indeed. And I want to stop here for a little while because we see in our work that cooperation really works and it, it delivers results. And uh, we want you to also grasp this context a little bit. I mean, you saw some of the key figures just now that Irvin presented, but we have a few more of those. And just to kind of set the scene, we were thinking about a good way to put it all together. So we prepared a little overview of our achievements for you. Have a look at this and Let's see how we can build on it together. Our current Interreg Europe program runs until 2023, but let's have a look at what we've already achieved. We've successfully committed all 322.4 million euro from the European Union to 258 inter-regional cooperation projects. 90% of the European Union's regions are represented in these projects. Over 2,000 institutions have been involved in these projects as partners. Close to 15,200 people from these institutions or otherwise engaged in the project activities have declared that their professional capacity increased thanks to the projects. The projects have identified over 4,250 good practices. Over 2,500 of them have been validated by our policy learning experts. They are now available for all in our Good Practice database. The project cooperation activities have led to many positive changes in national, regional and local development policies. Over 720 policy changes have been achieved. 58% of these involve structural funds programs. Our project partners mobilized 1,375 million euros to implement these policy changes 87% of them come from structural funds programs. By November 2021, we have paid 232 million euros to the projects for their activities. We can say that for one euro spent, 5.9 euros of local, regional or national funds have been used more efficiently for new or improved policy solutions. For more results, check out our website. So that's a very, very quick overview of what we've been busy with over this <laughs> programming period. And as was said in the video, and as we mentioned before, you can find all of these results and solutions, ideas, partners, projects, good practices on our website. You don't even need to venture that far because we do have some highlights in the expo. So you can browse some of those during this event and have a look at some selected highlights of results. I'm also hoping to hear from some of our projects joining today. So if you have a result or an example of, of how cooperation has had an impact in your region, please do share that. We would love to see that in the chat and pick it up for, for later follow-up. Now, I think that's enough about the present. Time to start talking about the future, the main topic of the day. Back to you, Irvin. Uh, we've been talking about projects, platform, two pillars of activities. How is it going to work in the future? What's going to happen with them? Yeah, in the future, we will more or less more or less, we can say, do the same thing. Uh, the member states were happy with what we have achieved. So they said, OK, let's use what we have, continue. But we have slight changes. Um, we have in the requirements um, some uh, enlightenments. We have a broader thematic area. The project structure uh, will remain. We uh, have few opportunities for pilots. But my team will explain during the day all the details, so I don't want to anticipate uh, the information which is coming the whole day. Uh, then the policy learning platform will also remain. Uh, the partner states were also happy with them and uh, contributed even a small an increase of the budget. So the excellent team of experts uh, and the team of the policy learning platform managing uh, all the exercises will uh, continue to work uh, for you for the regions in Europe. 
All right, so you mentioned some highlights, more info coming on those very soon. Um, you also mentioned the budget. What can you say about the budget? What kind of budget are we expecting? How many projects will we have roughly in the next programming period? Yeah, we have a slightly increased budget and um, still we expect also that the budget of the projects are increased. Uh, we have more opportunities for the projects to include activities from the beginning of their uh, work. Uh, so we expect a little bit less, a uh, smaller number of projects, about 220 is the expectations we have for uh, the future. And I hope that I see many of you uh, at our first uh, seminar for approved uh, projects somewhere at the beginning of uh, the year 2022. So, looking forward to seeing you there. Um, that's a very good teaser of what is coming. We're going to dive deeper into all of these in our morning session as we continue. Um, thank you, Irvin, for now. Uh, that's, I think, enough for our opening here. Now that you've heard from me and our director, uh, it's time to give the floor to some of our colleagues. And we also want to hear from you. So I just want to repeat once again, we have this poll open in Slido. There is the Q&A tab. Start posting your questions, ideas, comments. Let's shape the discussion of the day together. First, I will let some of my colleagues um, tell you how they see the future Interreg Europe, and then we'll go over and have a look at your chat inputs. So let's meet the colleagues. Many policymakers in Europe look for efficient and innovative solutions for their challenges uh, and Interreg Europe is actually a really good tool to help them to find those solutions. We can help you find relevant policy solutions and you can find them quickly. You don't need to reinvent the wheel. It is a fantastic opportunity to implement projects with the partners from all across the Europe. And now in the new programming period you can address any of the topics on the EU's agenda with Interreg Europe, which is great. Interreg Europe provides great opportunities for networking for regional development policymakers in Europe. It allows them to find inspiration and new solutions to the challenges they face in their region. It's a program for regions and by regions. Use the opportunities we offer. All right, I said it was time to meet the team. There were a few of our colleagues there. We have one more who's going to be the voice of our chat also today. Some of you might have met her yesterday. Petra Polaskova, my communication officer, colleague from the Joint Secretariat, is looking at the chat and your comments. We have a whole team working behind the scenes, answering your questions and picking up comments from there as well. So let's go and have a quick look at how things are going over there. Petra, how is it looking? Well, the chat uh, is as busy as yesterday and I'm super happy about it. People are saying their hellos, they tell everybody where they come from, they're introducing their institutions, they're presenting their project ideas and that's exactly what the chat is for. So please keep doing it. Um, have a look whether any of these ideas, any of these topics is of interest to your institution. Contact those people, get, uh, yeah, get together, discuss whether you can create a partnership. So this is for the chat. Uh, please, one little uh, repetition, what uh, Mia already mentioned. We will continue with uh, um, content uh, today. And if you have any question, please use the tab that is called Q&A so that it's easier for us to spot your question so that we can pick it up and pass it to our speakers. So chat is busy. Uh, everything looks great. Uh, everybody seems to be uh, enjoying uh, this possibility to share their ideas, to say hello. So I hope uh, we'll see uh, all of this uh, during the event. And we have been looking at or asking for your inputs in a poll in Slido to, to figure out what you want to know about the future so that we can address those concerns as we continue with our speakers. We'll do that very soon, but can we have a look at the, look, look at the Slido? Petra, how is that looking? Well, again, uh, participants uh, did listen to you, so they did go to Slido and we have over 120 contributions there. And uh, it's quite clear, uh, many people are interested in the timing. Uh, timing, you see, it's right in the center, one of the biggest topics uh, interesting uh, for everybody. Uh, other people say that they are interested in timeline, that they are interested when the opening happens, so these all can be clustered together. Another huge topic, 
And again, you see it right in the center are the priorities. Priorities, you can also call it topics. Next to it, you see key topics. So again, what topics will we fund? What kind of cooperation, what kind of projects will be open uh, with us and supported by us. And then, of course, there are some other uh, issues that interest many of you. Some of you are uh, really all-inclusive because you say you're interested in everything about the future. So we'll try to meet this demand as much as we can. Uh, then uh, I would say that another quite interesting topic for many is the funding. We have uh, some keywords saying funding rate, funding. Uh, so this is also one of the key topics. It suggests, Mia, that we'll have quite a number of questions as we go along this event. So I hope uh, please use the Q&A and post your questions right there so that our speakers can address them and you get the answers. All right. Excellent. I am taking note of all of this and I'll pass it on to our speakers as we get into talking about the future with them. We are going to do that very, very soon. Seeing how the word cloud is looking and knowing that your questions are soon coming, I think we all need to take a breath and maybe refill our cups of coffee, get a glass of water, stretch our legs. We will show you what cooperation can do and what happens when people work together. This also counts as a little break, so make use of it. In about five minutes, we are going to continue, and that's going to be all about the future. So get some inspiration from this little video and see you in about five minutes back here on the stage. Jag hade tagit några överdoser och jag hade fått hjärtstopp två gånger. Så då blev jag tvångsplacerad där då. Jag har ju... Ja, var det lite vid kriminalitet, droger, håller på både som använt, sålt, hamnat på anstalt rätt många gånger och sen vart man hit. Som vi kan fånga upp människor som faller utanför myndigheternas ramverk helt enkelt. Va? Många av de här vi möter här står ju utanför samhället på ett sätt där vi som socialt företag når dem mycket lättare. It's not a question of gaining profit economic profit. It's, it's a question of dealing with social issues, societal issues, problems. If, if I look at our organization, we are not a, a business organization. We want to make the, be the world better for people. We want people to get a job because we know all the benefits uh, that comes from having a job. This was a new thing for us. And we realized that we needed to put this, this topic on the agenda. We needed to have the politicians with us, so it was very important for us to, to be a part of the project. The contacts with other regions have impact on your own energy, I think. You look at another region, they have had success with something that gives you inspiration. You can do as good as they do. I was in Budapest. What we could see that was that they were very professional. They were very um, like, like an ordinary business. Um, and I think that is important for us in Sweden to learn that it can be an ordinary business. Uh, and it's okay to, 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 to make profit, uh, but you have to put it back somewhere good uh, when you do that. This gave us an opportunity to, to focus on this, this topic, very important topic, and influence the political agenda in our countries. It has been that we now have a regional development strategy where social development is a important part. There are two documents that, at a more concrete level, pick out the direction of how we should increase the number of social development in our country. When I was approached to be a part of this uh, program or, or race, I, I, um, I think we only had two uh, social enterprises in, in my municipality. And now we, have, uh, we are going on uh, six or seven uh, that had been started during this time. And, and, uh, uh, and that's uh, quite an uh, interesting development for, for how we do things. 
in, in this county, the last two years, it has happened a lot of things. Uh, and I'm very pleased that we did it right now because it, it, we feel the change uh, and we feel that we have a wind in the sails now. <laughs> Helena och Tony är ju människor som var helt kvaddade när de kom och de har blivit förvandlade så att de är pelare i hela vår verksamhet. Jag fick ju rutiner, struktur i vardagen. Jag fick något meningsfullt att göra som var viktigt. Jag fick en plats där jag kände att jag var behövd och att jag gjorde någon nytta för både mig själv och samhället och andra. Jag, blev, jag kände mig uppskattad. Ja, det ändrar mitt liv rätt mycket det här. Idag har jag ett förhållande med en tjej som jag är älskad av. Hon har tre barn sedan tidigare, men de är som mina också idag. Det har vänt allting. Så kriminalitet, droger, det förekommer inte längre. Det finns inte ens i tankarna.